Hello, my name is Nicole Carson Bonilla and I'm a portrait photographer. Sometimes my creative concept for a photo shoot will start with an inspiration piece, like these nesting hat boxes I found at Goodwill. I was really drawn to the large floral print on them in these rose and beige vintage colors and I could imagine a young blonde girl being photographed with these wearing a rose colored dress. Over the next few weeks I kept my eyes open and found the perfect rose colored bed sheets to use. And I love using bed sheets because they come in very large pieces of fabric, the colors are beautiful, and they're super comfortable and easy to work with. I decided to make a throw skirt and a matching blouse for my model to wear. The top section of the skirt is literally a flat circle with the waist cut out of the middle. Then I added a waistband that can be adjusted to fit a waist from about 20 inches up to about 30 inches. I prefer to make the top of the skirt lay flat against the body as opposed to being gathered at the waistband. It makes a slimmer silhouette on the model. I added two wide ruffles to the bottom half of the skirt. I used my ruffle foot on my serger to speed up the process. For the blouse, I knew I wanted to add some lace in the same rose color. It would add texture without adding too much contrast. I bought about five yards of lace from Sass Fabrics, which is one of my favorite local fabric stores. I created a middle panel on the front of the blouse. I cut strips of lace the same width as the center panel. Then I used basting spray to hold them in place until I top stitched them to the blouse panel. I also wanted to add lace to the top of the sleeve to add an extra feminine touch. I made a ruffle slightly wider than the lace and sewed them both into the top of the sleeve. I made three quarter length sleeves with a wide ruffle on the bottom half. I added more lace to the bottom of the sleeves. To make the flower wreath for her hair, I started with brown pipe cleaners and twisted them together to form a round base. Then I have an assortment of artificial flowers that I hot glued to alligator clips. Then I simply clipped them to the pipe cleaner base. I also added some ruffled lace and some more artificial flowers to a simple straw hat I also purchased at Goodwill. I love the band of pink color around the brim. I looked through my studio wardrobe for items that matched the colors of the roses on the hat boxes. I came up with this lace dress and tan silk curtain panel. I draped them inside the hat box and clipped in a couple more flowers. Then I added a pearl necklace to continue the vintage theme. My portrait studio is set up in the guest suite in my home, and the room is about 11 by 15 feet, so I have to make use of every square inch. I also use this room for sound recording, which is why I have sound panels attached at the ceiling line. Behind my backdrop, I have a Canon 600EX speed light with a MagMod MagSphere pointed at the ceiling. The MagSphere helps to gently spread the light across the back wall, which spills over my backdrop. The flash is set to a very low power and provides a subtle amount of fill and hair light coming down on my model. For my key light, I have a Canon 600EX speed light inside of a Westcott softbox. I added some gaffers tape to secure the flash shoe so my speed light is always pointing into the back of the softbox. The softbox comes with one layer of white diffusion. But to further soften the light, I added a double layer of white fabric I cut from a white bed sheet. I surged the two layers together to form a box cover. Then I used safety pins to secure it in place. I have a third Canon EX speed light at the back of the studio. I use a MagMod Mag Bounce on top of the flash pointed towards the back wall and a white hanging sheet. This flash is set to a very low power and provides a subtle amount of fill light to the front of the model. I use an LED ring light as the ambient light in the room. It is set to daylight temperature to match the speed lights. I use a white V-flat camera right to bounce light into the shaded side of my model. Then I have another V-flat folded in half with a painted black side towards the model to minimize any extra reflected light adding to my key light camera left. I used my Canon EOS R with a Canon 24-7 2.8 lens. I love the auto eye focus on this camera. To best show off the hat boxes and add a whimsical element, I wanted to photograph a cat sitting inside the hat box. A friend of mine in my neighborhood owns two beautiful hairless cats. This is Dobby. I photographed Dobby separately inside the hat box. Since he is hairless, he's used to being wrapped up. He was surprisingly comfortable sitting inside the hat box. And he also tolerated having a pearl bracelet around his neck as a necklace. I find it is so much easier to photograph the models separate from the pets and then just composite them together later. I set up the hat boxes on a small side table I borrowed from my mom. She conveniently lives next door to me. 
and I unrolled my light gray painted backdrop. Then I brought in my model Amelia in the rose colored skirt and blouse that I had made. I love adding movement to the skirts and fabrics in my portraits. My daughter Rebecca came in and threw the skirt for me while I snapped the shutter. Amelia is also a very talented musician, so I had her bring her violin. I used my brown hand-painted backdrop to be harmonious with the color of the violin. I switched out the hat for the flower wreath. Then I had my daughter throw the skirt to add some movement. I then switched places with her and let her press the shutter button while I threw some pink chiffon fabric to create the shapes that I had in mind. I wanted this fabric to be a visual representation of the sound coming from the violin. I like to import my photos into Exposure X6 for culling and organizing. I use the color tags to identify my favorites. Once I've selected my favorites, I export a JPEG copy to Photoshop for editing. I shoot in RAW and prefer to slightly underexpose my photos. For the hat box portrait, I selected five photos to combine in Photoshop. I selected one photo to use for the cat, one throw of the left side of the skirt, and three throws to combine for the right side of the skirt. Here is the progression of the layers. Once in Photoshop, I had to expand my background, clip out my elements, and then seamlessly layer them together to appear as one photo. For the violin portrait, I combined about seven photos to get the best skirt movement on the left and the right, and several throws of the pink chiffon fabric. Here is the progression of the layers in this photo. Again in Photoshop, I had to expand my background, clip out my elements, and then seamlessly layer them together to appear as one photo. The second violin portrait only required one photo to edit. Once my Photoshop editing was complete, I went back into Exposure and did my final color edits on the layered Photoshop files. I used a combination of two presets, Kodak Ultra Color 100 UC and Golden Hour Orange. I adjusted their balance until I got the look I was wanting. I used the same color grading on all three portraits to get a consistent look. I entered three of these portraits in the Portrait Masters International Awards and Accreditation Program, and I am so excited to have won two silver awards and a bronze with distinction on them. And I'm so grateful to Amelia for being a fantastic model, and I am so excited to have these portraits in my portfolio. I hope you enjoyed this behind the scenes look at my creative photo shoot. And if you liked it, please consider clicking the like and subscribe buttons below. Then I can keep making videos like this one.